Welcome once again to a reading of the book From Religion to Christ by Peter Jeffrey. We're on to chapter 5. The title is Christ Lifted Up. Nicodemus was an intelligent religious man and one very familiar with the Old Testament. He came to Jesus because he was anxious to learn from him. As a Pharisee, this was very unusual, but Nicodemus recognized the truth of what was being said about Jesus, that no man spoke with the authority of this man. This was no exaggeration because Jesus was undoubtedly the greatest teacher the world has ever known. So in John 3, we have the meeting of the greatest teacher and the intelligent man who wants to learn, yet Nicodemus could not make heads nor tails of what Jesus was saying. His reaction to the teaching of Jesus was, how can this be? Why could he not understand? Jesus alludes to the answer in verse 10. You are Israel's teacher and you do not understand these things? Nicodemus was a theological expert, a man well versed in the Old Testament literature and history. Therefore, you would expect him to understand Jesus. But in fact, his religious background was an obstacle to spiritual understanding. Nicodemus was brought up as a Pharisee with certain preconceived doctrines that he obviously accepted as true, so that when he was confronted with the truth as it is in Jesus, his religious beliefs got in the way of true belief. It must have been very hard for this Pharisee to unlearn all that he had always believed. Unlearning is much more difficult than learning, and that is why there are a few obstacles more of a hindrance to true faith than religion. Religion colors our thinking about God. It does not matter if the religion is Islam or Hinduism or the 101 varieties of Christianity available today. They set in our minds certain concepts about God that are unbiblical, so that when the religious man is faced with biblical truths, he often reacts with antagonism. For instance, if a man is brought up on a doctrine that teaches all you need to be Christian is to be kind and respectable and go to church occasionally, and this man is told that, like everyone else, he is a sinner and needs to be born again, it comes as a shock and his inevitable reaction is to reject it. There is no one who will react so strongly against the biblical accusation that all men and women are sinners and under the judgment and wrath of God as the religious man. To be told that there is no difference in the sight of God between the terrorist killer and the religious man who is not born again is sure to cause anger and resentment. So Nicodemus could not understand because of the spiritual blindness that was encouraged by his religion. But Jesus is infinitely patient, and he speaks now in terms that Nicodemus ought to be able to understand. He takes the Pharisee back to Numbers chapter 21, and a familiar story that he would know as a fact in history. It is a story he would have read many times, but Jesus explains it in the most glorious spiritual way. Quote, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. It's John 3.14. The story in Numbers 21 tells of the rebellion of the people of Israel against God. They were in the wilderness under the judgment of God because of the previous rebellion. But God was good to them and gave them water from the rock and provided daily food in the form of manna, a kind of honey wafer. But they were impatient and complained against God. And in this frame of mind, they easily exaggerated their problem. There is no water, they said. But of course there was. And with regard to the manna, they said, we detest this miserable food. God dealt with this sin and notice in Numbers 21.6, God sent poisonous snakes among them. The snakes were no accident. It was no piece of bad luck that they happened to be in the camp at the spot where the snakes were. This was God's judgment. They were God sent. Many Israelites died, and at last the people realized that it was because of their sin. They turned to Moses to mediate with God for them. And God in his mercy answered Moses' prayer, and though he did not remove the snakes, he provided an answer. Moses was to make a bronze snake and put it on a pole so that everyone could see it. If anyone was bitten by a snake and its poison was beginning to do its deadly work, if they looked to the provision of God's grace, the bronze snake, they would not die but live. That was the story. 
Now Jesus says, even as Moses did that, so too must he, the Son of Man, be lifted up. What did Jesus mean by this being lifted up? We do not have to guess because we are told in John 12, 32 and 33 that this was a reference to his death. So Jesus is talking about his death on the cross and he is saying that the action of Moses illustrates perfectly how Jesus saves men from their sin and gives them new life. The story of the bronze snake starts in Numbers 21, 4 and 5 with the people rebelling against God. They do not want to go God's way. They want to go their own way, and they find the gifts and provisions of God detestable. They become sick of what God is giving them, so they rebel. They do not want God to rule them. They sin, for this is what sin is. It is a rejection of the authority and will of God. Every time we sin, no matter what that sin is, we are in fact rejecting God's way and going our own way. We are saying that the things of God are not good for us and that we know better. That is the state of us all naturally. That is why we find prayer so boring and the Bible so irrelevant. These provisions of God's grace are as detestable to the ordinary man as the manna was to the Israelites. So they sin. Sin is very easy, but it always brings its consequences, and it did for these Israelites. The Lord sent judgment. God is holy, and he cannot and will not tolerate sin. At the beginning of his dealings with man, God said to Adam, If you sin, you will die. So divine judgment comes via the snakes, and people die. God's dealing with us today may not be identical to the Israelites in the Old Testament, but in effect it is the same. When we sin, we do not expect to get bitten by a snake, but that sin will still bring its consequence. The wages of sin is still death, and every town in the country has its monuments to this fact. We call them cemeteries. Why will we all die one day? A doctor will examine our dead bodies and will enter on the death certificate the cause of death. He might write cancer, or heart attack, or pneumonia, or whatever it is, but he will be wrong. These are not the real cause of death. They are merely the means by which death comes to us. The cause is sin. Why did those Israelites die in the desert? Because they were bitten by snakes? No. They died because they sinned. If this reality of death as the judgment on sin is so true, the vital question has to be, is there an answer? Is there any way guilty sinners can escape this inevitable judgment? God alone provides an answer. His answer is not religion. God's answer to his own judgment upon sin is Jesus. And this is why Jesus says he must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. In Numbers 21, we see how God answered the desperate need of the people. It starts in verse 7 when the people said, We have sinned. There was a confession of guilt and by implication there was repentance. They did not pretend everything was all right. They did not protest their innocence. Neither did they reluctantly acknowledge their sin, but protest that God's judgment was too harsh. There was simply a confession of sin and guilt, and a plea for mercy. It was then that God provided his answer. There is no salvation without repentance, and there can be no repentance without conviction of sin. Have you ever said, I have sinned, and said it with a seriousness and earnestness that anxiously looks for an answer? God's answer was a very strange one. Moses was to make a model of a snake and put it on a pole. Those in need of God's mercy were to look at this bronze snake and they would live. It was a very strange answer, but it was the only one. God did not give them an alternative. This was the only remedy. The same principle is true for us. God's only answer to our sin and guilt is Jesus lifted up on the cross. On the cross, Jesus died to deal with sin. He died as our substitute. He died the just for the unjust. He bore our sins in his body on the cross. God laid on him all our sin and guilt, and Jesus became the scapegoat, that is, the innocent taking away the sin of the guilty.
This is the clear language of the Old and New Testaments to describe what happened when Jesus was lifted up on the cross. The command of God to the Israelites in the desert was, Look to my provision of love and mercy and live. Likewise, the command of the gospel to guilty sinners is, Look to Jesus, believe in him as your sin-bearer and savior, and live. The scripture here does not say so, but human nature being what it is, we can reasonably deduce that some of those bitten by the snakes looked and lived, and others refused. They would argue, this is nonsense. How can looking to the bronze snake possibly get rid of the poison in my body? This is ridiculous, unreasonable, irrational. Just like Nicodemus, they were saying, how can this be? So they would not look, and they died. There they lay in the dust of the desert, reasonable, rational, and sensible, but dead. Of course, they were not really reasonable, rational, or sensible. They were stubborn, and above all, they were continuing in their rejection of God's way. The bronze serpent was God's only way to avoid physical death, and Jesus is God's only way to avoid spiritual death. To look to Jesus means to believe. It means to turn as a guilty, hell-deserving sinner to God's provision of grace and mercy. Those folk in Numbers 21 knew they were dying and they knew why. Their only alternative to death was to look to the bronze snake. Those who did, lived. Death is the wages of sin. We are all sinners and therefore we will all die. And this does not mean only the death of the body, but the eternal judgment of God in hell. The only answer to this awful state is God's answer. Jesus said he was to be lifted up on the cross so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life.